Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Excel just came out with 14 new functions in March of 2022 and they're really exciting things and I hope to go through all of them over the next few tutorials. But today we're just going to take a look at three text functions called text before, text after, and text split. Now these are only available on the Beta Insider program, so you may not have access to them yet, but hopefully they will be released to the general public sometime soon. So let's take a look at these three functions in Excel. So first we're going to look at the text before and text after functions. They're structured virtually identically where your syntax and your arguments are your text, what is your delimiter, what instance number, and again, that's an optional argument, and then ignore case, meaning do you want it to be case sensitive or not. And so what I have here is a list of states in the U.S., equal sign, their population, a slash, and then their growth. And I want to split that data into the three columns of state, population, and growth. So first, I'm going to use the text before function to pull out the state. Equals text before, and you can see you have your text, your delimiter, instance number, and ignore case. So in this case, my text is A2, and the text before, I want to use the equal sign. So you need to put your delimiters in double quotes equal sign, double quotes, and the last two arguments are optional, so in this case I'm going to ignore those. I hit enter and I get California. I copy that down and I get all the states. Now notice here, just for the state of Texas, I put a length function in here to see how many characters it pulled, and it says that it's six characters. Now Texas is only five. The reason is because I said give me everything before the equal sign, which includes a space. So in this case instead, if I want to put my delimiter as space equals, hit enter, copy that down, notice now that changed to 5. So you have to keep that in mind depending how you're trying to pull your text. With text after, very similarly set up, if I say equals text after, select my text here, and for growth, I want everything after the slash. So again, I'll put that in double quotes, slash space, double quotes, close my parentheses, hit enter, and again, it's going to give me that growth. I can just copy that down, and now I have the growth for each state in that column. And for the population, since we're pulling it out of the middle, I'm actually going to use both text before and text after. So first, I'm going to say equals text after. My text is going to be what's in A2, comma, and my text after, again in double quotes, the equal sign space, close my parentheses, hit enter, and I get the population and the growth. Now I can use text before. The text after result will be my text, comma, and I want the text before, again in double quotes, the slash space, close my double quotes, close my parentheses, and now I get the population copy that down, and I've taken this data and split it into three columns. Now this is a very simple example. There's other ways to have accomplished this using flash fill, using the left, mid, and right functions, but this just gives you an example of how this can work. Now the third argument is instance number. So for example, to get the growth here, I could have used the slash, or I could use the space and then list my instance number. For California, the space right before the growth is one, two, three, it's the fourth one. So if I put a four in here, copy that, I get the same result. However, notice that 
with states like New York, North Carolina, they actually have five spaces, so that actually doesn't work. But I'm just showing you an example of how the instance number can be used if you have multiple of the same delimiter and you want it to be one other than the first delimiter. So I'm going to go ahead and change that back to the way it was before. So that's text before and text after. Now let's look at text split. Here I have the same data, but it's just in one large cell, in one big lump of data. And again, I have the state, equal sign, the population, a slash, its growth, and then separating each state is a semicolon. Well, with text split, you have your input text, your column delimiter, your row delimiter, ignore empty, meaning do you want to ignore if one of the items between your delimiter is, is blank, do you want to ignore that empty data, and pad with if you have an error or if you end up with a blank because there's no data there, what do you want to insert? You can insert a blank, you can insert any kind of text in between double quotes, and it will give you an example of that. So with text split, I'm going to just type equals text split. My text is in cell A2, comma. And with my column delimiter, if again in double quotes I put a semicolon, close my parentheses and hit enter, it takes all the text between those delimiters and breaks it down into columns. So here I have California, Texas, Florida, etc., all the way through all the data that's in that one cell. If instead, in my formula, if I put another comma here so that my column delimiter I just leave blank and my row delimiter now is the semicolon, when I hit enter, notice now it breaks all that data into rows, nice and neatly there. So I've taken all that text that was in one cell and broken it down into a different row for each state. Now, if I want to split into different columns and rows, I can do that all within the same formula using text split. So here, if I take and put in for my column delimiter, I'm going to put in the equal sign and I hit enter. Now it's split California, the state, or New York, Texas, Florida, etc., away from the population and growth because I split the columns by the equal sign and I split the rows by the semicolon. One last thing that you can do here is if you have multiple items that you want to split into columns, you can use an array constant to list multiple versions of that. So for an example, I'm going to go ahead and go into my formula here. And in the column delimiter, in curly brackets, is where I can put my array constant. So the first one I'm going to put is the equal sign. I'll put a comma, and then I'll put a slash. So I have now two items in my array constant that I want to break up this text in, and then my semicolon will break it into rows. Now when I hit enter, I've taken this whole big block of text and with one simple formula here, was able to break that down into three separate columns so I can or easily digest or manipulate this data however I want to do that. Let's say we have a scenario where for Florida, for example, the delimiters are there, but there's no data that is inserted. So we have the delimiters, but we don't have any data. Notice it just generates blanks there. However, if I change this to true and hit enter, notice I get an error there. So true means don't ignore the empty cell, and that's why we get a, an error there, an NA error. False, which is the default, means yes, ignore that empty cell, and they end up being empty. But if you leave it at true, and instead 
with your pad width, you want to enter some kind of data. In double quotes, I could put something like no data, hit enter, and now those errors are replaced with no data. And that's how you can do this in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bytes.com, or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy excelling.